The cruise phase. This is a critical part of the Mars 2020 mission, where perseverance and ingenuity survive a seven month long journey from Earth to Mars through interplanetary space. In this video, we will have a detailed overview of the crew's stage and how exactly we keep this mission alive as it's making its way towards Mars. So let's talk about that. The crew's stage begins where the last video ended, just a few hours after launch from Cape Canaveral. In this case, the Mars 2020 mission is already making its way to the Red Planet. However, just a few hours into the seven month long flight, the spacecraft went into safe mode. Now, as I mentioned in that last video, safe mode is when the spacecraft notices something that is not going as planned, and therefore it automatically goes into doing mission critical things, such as making sure the spacecraft has enough power and letting NASA know that it's in safe mode. At this point, engineers and scientists on the ground look over the data to see what exactly is happening to make sure that they don't lose the spacecraft. So in this case, just a few hours after launch, the spacecraft had noticed something was going wrong with the thermal system. To understand this problem more, let's learn about the thermal system. Now space is pretty tricky. You're either dealing with incredibly hot temperatures being directly in sunlight or incredibly cold temperatures being in the shadow. Now ultimately, you have to be able to control how hot or cold your spacecraft gets because if it gets too far from the norm, then it will destroy the electronics and you'll have a dead mission. So how do you do this? Well, as the rover or the electronics on board are operating, they're constantly warming up. So you need a way to cool them down. And in this case, spacecraft designers use Freon loops, or at least for Mars rovers they have. These Freon loops essentially absorb some of the heat from the inside of the spacecraft and then go out to the outer parts, near the radiators, in which the heat is then radiated out into the vacuum of space. Therefore, it keeps the inside of the spacecraft cooler and then can keep the electronics operating. Now this is very important because if it gets too hot on the inside or too cold on the outside, then you might not have as much control over the mission as possible. And this is exactly what put the spacecraft into safe mode. As the Mars 2020 mission was making its way to Mars, for a short period of time, it was in the Earth's shadow, causing the spacecraft to be even colder than expected, at least on the outside. Now NASA has many sensors within this Freon loop to make sure that the right amount of heat is being exposed or radiated to outer space. However, when it was in Earth's shadow, it got cooler at the radiators and therefore the threshold was just barely broken, causing the spacecraft to automatically go into safe mode. Now the next day, NASA announced that this was almost anticipated. Well, they didn't expect it exactly, but it caused no harm to the spacecraft. Rather, it was just a little bit off in the models that they had. However, they were fairly conservative in the design and therefore it caused no problems that it went into safe mode. In fact, they basically could have expected to see the same thing on the Curiosity rover. However, it didn't experience an Earth shadow and therefore this didn't happen for Curiosity. So although almost instantly the spacecraft went into safe mode, it really wasn't that big of an issue and NASA quickly resolved the problem. So the Mars 2020 rover was on its way to the red planet. But how exactly does it get there and how does it survive the rest of the way? This is what we're going to be talking about the cruise stage of the mission. What is the cruise stage? The Perseverance rover and the Ingenuity helicopter aren't just exposed to the elements out there. In fact, they have an entire stage dedicated to making sure that it's on the right transfer and able to communicate back to Earth, this being the cruise stage. Now this same cruise stage has been used for many Mars rovers in the past, including Spirit and Opportunity, Curiosity, and the Pathfinder mission. Let's get into more details about the cruise stage itself. A majority of the spacecraft is made out of aluminum and has its own power source. If we look at the top of it, we can see that it's primarily solar panels. When it's near Earth, it's generating 600 watts. And as it gets closer to Mars, that decreases as it gets further from the sun and reaches roughly 300 watts. To put that into perspective, the average microwave runs at over 600 watts. One of the systems to the cruise stage is the thermal system, which has to control how much heat is being radiated out into space. 
In fact, this cruise stage has 10 radiators on board to make sure that it's able to control exactly how much heat is leaving the system. A few things that are incredibly important to spacecraft, which aren't normally considered, is the direction that it is facing and where exactly it is in space. But why are those so important? Well, the direction it's facing is critical to mission success. Again, because if it's facing the wrong way, let's say the antennas aren't facing Earth, then we might have a much harder time coming in contact with the spacecraft. And even worse, if the solar arrays aren't facing the sun, then we can quickly lose power, go into safe mode, and if they never get back into the right orientation, just lose the mission entirely. So which way the spacecraft is oriented or its attitude is critical to succeeding or even arriving at Mars. But the second one was where it is in space. Why is that so important? Well, remember, we're flying this spacecraft through hundreds of millions of miles to another planet. So if we're off by just a little bit, we can miss the entire planet. Space is massive. So relative to how far we're going, just being off by a degree could just miss the planet entirely. So we need to make sure that not only are we facing the right direction, but we're at the right location basically the entire time we're flying to Mars. So how do we control those things? Well, there's a few different sensors that are on board that are important to this part. The first one is a sun sensor, and it does exactly what it sounds like. It tracks the location of the sun. Well, there's multiple sensors, but they're essentially seeing how close is this sensor to pointing towards the sun and making sure that it's not getting in the wrong alignment. Because again, if the sun's not in the right location or not pointing out our solar panels, then it's just gonna go downhill from there. And the second one is a star sensor, which helps us find out exactly which way we're pointing. Having a sun sensor and a star sensor gives us complete information about the orientation of our spacecraft, which is everything we wanted to know. It also gives us information about where exactly we are. In addition to communication data and the Doppler effect, we're able to understand where our spacecraft is going and how fast it is moving, making sure that it's on the right path. However, if it's not on the right path, we need to use our engines that we have on board to try and get back on track. Before I talk about the propulsion system, let me talk about the communication system, which includes the two antenna on board. Both of them are X-band radio antennas, which are a fancy way of just saying that they use radio communication. One of them is a low gain antenna and the other one is a medium gain antenna. And I won't go into too much detail here, but the main idea is as the spacecraft is closer to Earth, it uses a low gain antenna to communicate with NASA. Whereas as it gets further from Earth and closer to Mars, it transitions over to using the medium gain antenna. But if one goes wrong, hopefully we're still able to talk with the other one. Last but not least is the propulsion system consisting of two fuel tanks, each one having 31 kilograms of hydrazine. Now hydrazine is technically the molecule N2H4, and this essentially is a monopropellant, meaning it doesn't have another propellant that it reacts with. Instead, it's all by itself, hence mono. Now, the monopropellant does need a catalyst in order to actually react, so it's not just gonna blow up inside the fuel tanks. However, hydrazine is toxic and is frequently used for interplanetary-like missions because it generates a low power-like thrust, where you don't need a lot of thrust in order to change your trajectory. And the cruise stage also has eight one-pound thrusters on board in which it uses to make sure that it's on the right track. Why could the Mars 2020 mission be off track? I keep saying that it has to make sure that it's going in the right direction, but is it that big of an issue? And in reality, it's not a major issue. However, if you're not going to update the spacecraft's trajectory, you could miss the planet. But why is this so? Remember the safe mode I talked about at the beginning of the video, how the thermal team didn't exactly predict how cold it would get in the eclipse? Well, that was because they are using models here on the ground. And models are our best estimate of what's going to happen. Now, gravity, we can estimate that pretty well in our models. However, there are still very minor impacts from the sun and radiation that could change the trajectory of a spacecraft. Therefore, even though we have models that can accurately predict where it's going to be going, the best way to know what's gonna to happen to it is to let it fly. So as it's traversing its trajectory on its way to Mars, we keep track and make sure that it's at the right locations. 
and if it's off base just a little bit, we have enough fuel from that hydrazine to make sure it can get back on track. And these maneuvers are actually designed into the transfer itself, called TCMs, or Trajectory Correction Maneuvers. For the last few Mars rovers, they've all included six TCMs, essentially six different locations along the transfer where they can perform these burns. They're put into the design of the mission. So it's not like that the spacecraft is going off course, but rather it's planned that we need to update where it's going to go. Because not only are we trying to hit an entire planet, but we're trying to hit a very small landing site on that planet. And in order to do so, we need to make sure we're on exactly the right path. Normally, a cruise phase is pretty quiet, or we hope so, because if it's not quiet, then maybe something's going wrong. But NASA has released some information or some data about the mission itself. One bit of data came from a microphone on Percy that's actually releasing some of what it heard on its way through interplanetary space. Now you might be wondering, but you can't hear anything in space, and that's true. The microphone is actually only heating up some of the local electronics that are vibrating the rover itself. It's not picking up wind as it's rushing by the rover. And NASA also released this image of the rover inside waiting to arrive at Mars. Another fun fact about the cruise phase is while it's flying towards Mars, it is also spinning at two RPM, or revolutions per minute. It's spinning such that the solar arrays and the antennas are always pointed in their correct directions. So it's not spinning all over the place, but rather there's a design to why it's spinning. And in fact, it helps stabilize the spacecraft to make sure that it doesn't destabilize as it's flying through. As the mission gets closer to Mars, it will start to slow down its spin and eventually stop. And then 10 minutes before landing, the cruise stage will detach from the rest of the spacecraft and then eventually will just impact the surface of Mars. And the same thing was done in 2012 when the Curiosity rover landed on Mars. Its cruise stage also impacted Mars and left this crater. A few minutes after the cruise stage separates begins the landing sequence, also called the seven minutes of terror. In the next video, we will talk about this landing sequence in vast detail. We will look at the different components of how it lands on the surface of Mars and why it's called the seven minutes of terror. But if you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to this channel to learn more about Mars and space exploration as a whole. But thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.